can start. Yes. So, uh, welcome to the second talk. So, Adam Polak will be uh, still talking about Parkinson. Uh, hi. Uh, so, yeah, I will be talking about something somewhat also about MATLAB, which is the second favorite discrete optimization problem. Uh, and more specifically, I will be talking about the uh, parameter price complexity, and our parameter of interest will be the maximum item size. Uh, so, the algorithms that uh, you will see will be suitable for the case when the items are small. And uh, this is joint work with Lars, who's sitting here, and for, with Harold, who I guess is in Saarbrücken. And uh, so, could we give this talk on site? Uh, so, the slides are by Carol, uh, and there are some errors by me. Let me introduce you something. Okay, so um, if you are to the previous talk, you, uh, the, the two previous talks, you for sure remember the definition, but let me just Recall, so in the knapsack problem, uh, we'll be having a knapsack of capacity T uh, and a set of items. Each item has size SI and value VI. We want to find uh, a subset that fits into our knapsack and has the maximum total value uh, like this. Uh, and our second problem of interest is subset sum. Uh, so we're given a uh, Multi set of integers. I stress this multi here because uh, there are some differences. And uh, another thing is that all our algorithms work also in the setting in which you're allowed to specify that you have multiple items of the same uh, type by just setting this item once and then providing a multiplicity in binary encoding, which makes your uh, input size smaller. Uh, so we allow for multisets. And well, we're given this and items and integers, and we want to find the set of a prescribed target value t. Um, okay, so uh, uh, and just a remark that uh, that subset sum is uh, a special case of knapsack if you set values to uh, item sizes and ask for the maximum the value. If it's t, then, then the subset sum uh, is a yes instance, otherwise it's not. Um, okay, so what is known about the problems? Uh, well, they're both witty and pick hard. So the best known algorithms in terms of T, uh, in terms of M, sorry, we don't expect this to be uh, polynomial. And what we have uh, best so far is um, to do the 0.5M. Um, but we have pseudo polynomial time algorithms. Uh, which then uh, can have polynomial dependence on n. For knapsack, uh, the best known is of anti time, the classical algorithm by Bellman. Uh, and for subset sum, we have near near time algorithms in these two parameters. Uh, and um, this, the, there are matching lower bounds. Uh, so under the mm, mean plus convolution hypothesis, uh, the the, the Bellman algorithm is optimal for knapsack, uh, and um, under uh, SETH and also the cover conductor, this linear time subset sum algorithm is optimal. Also, so and this this round also holds for knapsack because well the knapsack is uh, a hard a generalization of subset sum. Um, so the bottom line is that. If we look at these two parameters, the algorithms that we have are conditionally optimal, uh, at least in a, in a certain sense. Um, so, uh, what do we do in a PT world? We just ask about some other parameters. Uh, so, can we come up with some other parameters in, with, with which we can get better algorithms? Uh, and in which parameter regimes we can solve the problem in, in near time in input size. This is like another related question. Um, so, uh, what would be other uh, parameters of interest? Uh, so, the maximum item size, which I will denote by S, and also for knapsack we can think about maximum item value, which I will denote by V. 
Uh, so for example, if you think about this parameter, the Bellman algorithm runs in n squared s time because t can be always bounded by n times s um, <coughs> if t is larger than does uh, fit all, all the items. Uh, so we already know something in this parameterization. Can we do better? Mm. And uh, maybe this is not like I already hinted at this. Um, we want to distinguish between the total number of items and the number of distinct items. Uh, the reasons are twofold. First, the number of distinct items can be much smaller. If, uh, and this is like your actual input size if you encode multiplicity in binary. And the other thing is that in subsets, some have this strange um, behavior that uh, when you have many distinct items, the problem becomes easier than if you have many items of the same size. Uh, maybe it already followed someone from, from Carl's talk uh, an hour ago. If it's not clear, then, uh, then maybe you'll see uh, later in my talk why why this, this distinction is important. So uh, for the rest of this talk, the capital N is the total number of items and little n is the number of distinct items, which would make it much smaller. Uh, so in general, whenever you can replace capital N by little n or, or T by S, then it's, it's a better algorithm. Uh, okay, so, so just to, to, to summarize this, this problem definitions, uh, and add these multiplicities into, in, into the picture. Uh, so, so the problem that we focus on in terms of multiplicities can be phrased as an integer linear program. So in the input for each item, you're given its value, its size, and its multiplicity. Uh, and well, you want to maximize the value, subject to the fact that each item you take integer number of times between zero and its multiplicity. And the capacity is not uh, uh Yes, and we can assume that it is um, So, what is known for for this problem? Um, so, there are some tricks uh, that, uh, in general, lets you um, replace capital N with little n by either grouping items in some bundles or just removing unnecessary items. Uh, this works if you're okay with bounding your n in times of t or if you're okay with increasing your item size. So it's not like super general, but for all these algorithms, it works. Uh, so we have Bellman algorithm that runs in uh, tilde n times t uh, time. This tilde comes from the fact that if you replace capital N by little n, then the slope factors appear. Uh, then we have an algorithm by Peller and Fershi, uh, which was later rediscovered a couple of times, uh, which basically works in terms S times T. So if your item size is smaller than N, it's better than the one. Uh, and uh, in that, like, it makes sense to have smaller items than the number of items. It's like, it makes sense to have more items than possible sizes. And there is an algorithm by Fritz and Robert that works in, in this little n and s squared time. It's like a general algorithm for, for an ILP and specialized for, for an abstract that gives you this run of time. Uh, Miho mentioned this algorithm at the, at the very beginning of, of this workshop. Um, okay. So all these algorithms are either poly S times poly T or poly N times poly S. Uh, so can we replace this multiplication by addition? Or uh, in other words, can we get a linear time algorithm if S is very small, but polynomial in N? If S is like log N, then uh, this is linear in N, but what if, if S is, is small, but, but not so small? Uh, and we answer yes to this question. So we give an algorithm for knapsack that works in time uh, n plus s cube. And uh, if you solve some knapsack algorithm, then usually by, by the duality of this problem, you can, whenever you think about item sizes, you can re replace this with item values. 
like most of the time. So this is also the case in in our uh, algorithm. So uh, you have analogous n plus d cube uh, running time. So this gives you this minimum of the two parameters running time. Uh, so this is our result from knapsack. Um, for subset sum, um, again, the, um, okay, so as Harold mentioned in, in his talk, uh, uh, there is the, the linear time algorithm for uh, subset sum in N and T. Uh, and uh, he also mentions his results with uh, Philip Belnitz, um, in which they proved that the subset sum can be solved in linear time in a certain parameter regime. When when your target is close to half of the half of the value and the instance is uh, somewhat dense, uh, so if you analyze this algorithm, so if you want running time in terms of n and s, you can analyze your algorithm in that sense that either you use this algorithm or outside the the, the physical parameter regime you use the the new linear time algorithm, and combining these two things, uh, you get this kind of running time. So uh, <coughs> we call that u is the maximum item multiplicity, um, and uh, it's uh, so like what I want to say is that you cannot replace this this little m with capital M and set, say that u is one. You cannot do this trick by just making it item appear that many times as it is uh, in the instance. Uh, simply, this algorithm works worse in, if you have multiple items of the same size. There's this certain additive combinatorics uh, result, structural result, that, that is more efficient when you have more distinct items and it's easier to like, create any, any subset sum. So this dependence on you, it, it doesn't seem to be optimal, but it's not something we can easily get rid of. We have no idea how to get rid of it. Um, okay. Um, or, um, and uh, by using some kind of um, proximity result that uh, you will see in a minute, uh, you can assume that u is at most s. Um, so plugging this in here, you get n plus s squared time algorithm. Uh, the lower bound is n plus s uh, from SETH. So, so there is a gap between s and s squared, and the question is, can you can you uh, reduce this gap? So we managed to do this slightly. Uh, so we got go down from two to the five over three for such a sum. Uh, so this is the summary of our results. Uh, in the remaining, uh, I guess I have like ten minutes. Uh, I'll sketch the knapsack algorithm. Do you have any questions up to this point? So. Do you drop out of the picture in your, your new result? Sorry? You, did it drop out of the picture? So it, it disappeared in your new result? Or? What did it hurt? You. You. Yeah, you disappeared. Okay. So this new result is interesting if you use large. If you use one, if you have a set, not a multi set, and you use one, then you get S to the 3 through house. So this is interesting if you. If you care about multiple items in the same size. Um, okay, so what are the building blocks of the actually of the both algorithms, but mostly both knapsack? Um, so um, let me define something uh, that, that we call maximal prefix solution. Uh, if you like working with linear programs, this is the same as saying uh, Fractional vertex solution. Uh, so this is a solution that you obtain uh, by by this greedy algorithm, in which you sort items by their efficiency, that is like dollars per kilograms, uh, and uh, you take the, the most efficient items up to the point in which taking the next item would violate your uh, capacity, and you stop there. If you are really doing this greedy algorithm, we would still take further items, but we stop here, so we really take only a prefix in this order. Um, okay, and uh, Fritz and Robert proved that 
like they, they prove them more general state them, but, but from what they prove, it follows that uh, there is an optimal solution, uh, which can the, the solution to the abstract problem can be seen as a vector of, of length n, and each number is between zero and u. Uh, so there there exists a solution that differs from this maximal perfect solution uh, by at most two s items. So the L1 uh, distance between these two vectors is at most 2s. Uh, and the proof, at least in this one dimensional case, uh, is, is pretty easy. So uh, let me show, show you the proof. Um, so let's take uh, an optimal solution that is closest to this traffic solution in the L1 norm. Uh, so this uh, inner product uh, that times s, um, it's the total weight of the solution, right? You, you multiply item sizes, but by the times you, you pick each item. Uh, so there is a slight abuse of notation. Here I use s to denote the vector of sizes, and this s here is the maximal item size. So you with me, there are two different s's, they look the same. Okay, so um, both is um, the, the total size of uh, items in the maximum perfect solution and the sorry the optimal solution and the maximum perfect solution uh, it is we can assume that it's close to the t it's between t and t minus s uh, because if it's if, if it is smaller then it either means that you can take another item or you already took all items but if you took all items this means that the knapsack fits all items and that the, the state of holds trivial. It's the, the two solutions are, are equal. So um, they, they they are close, close to each. They are close to t, so they are in particular close to each other between minus s and s. Uh, so the idea is that we'll start with this solution p and we'll uh, gradually move items to make it closer to that. Um, and the way we're moving these items is. Um, we look at the, um, at, at, the, at the total size of this difference uh, and we move items so that to make it closer to zero. Um, okay, so at the end by moving these items we go to that. Uh, and I claim that uh, by doing this we change only two as items. If I prove that then that I proved that their difference was at most to us. And why is it so? Um, so we keep this invariance that the current solution that we have and that they differ the, the their total sizes differ uh, by something between minus and s. This is the assumption that we start with, and by making these moves uh, like towards zero, we keep if it was negative, we add something between zero and s, so it's still between minus s and s, and, and um, the, the other case is similar. Uh, so, if there are more than two s iterations, uh, I think it's not really visible here. Okay, whatever. If there are, there are more than two s iterations, you, you, there were two iterations in which you had the same uh, total size. Uh, so you could replace this thing in your um, Z solution uh, and you get a new solution Z prime, right? So you, you move this part here, you get a new solution Z prime that is still optimal. It has exactly the same total size. Uh, it has only a better total value because in the perfect solution you had like the maximum, the more efficient items in that you had less efficient items. Uh, so it's still optimal and it's closer to, to, to P. So it's a con contradiction with the assumption that um, we took optimum that is closest to P. So this is an uh, Okay. Um, so this proximity is uh, the, the key structural thing that we use in the algorithm. And how does the algorithm work? Um, so we will construct this prefix uh, solution really <clears throat> and then we will construct our optimal solution uh, by removing some items and adding some items um, and to do that uh, 
uh, we'll set some parameter t uh, and we'll try to compute for every number between 0 and t uh, like what is the um, what is the uh, basically the solution to the knapsack with capacity uh, with, with capacity k uh, and a similar way so, so this will be on the items that are not in our perfect solution the, the items that can be added to it and we'll also run a similar uh, algorithm for um, for the items that we took in, in our solution but here we'll compute the minimum total weight of items of weight k that we can remove from our solution um, and uh, this can be computed in s times t s times capital t time by uh, using the basically the ideas that I mentioned from Keller and Percy. Uh, there is this s times t natural algorithm. It can be generalized to, to this second. It is the fact that mean plus convolution can be computed in your time if one of the sequences is, is, is convex in, in a certain sense. Um, <coughs> And yeah, and basically then uh, for for every possible um, k, uh, you see what happens if you remove from your perfect solution items of total size uh, at least k and add items of total size at most k plus delta, which is the difference between what the perfect solution has and what is your your total capacity. Um, and um, since we know from the proximity argument that uh, this the, the optimal there is an optimal solution that is close to to, to ours, uh, it differs by at most two s items, and the total mass of these items is at most two s squared. So we need to do this thing for t equal to s squared plus is delta but delta is at most s. Uh, so the total running time is it's here you have s times t t is set to s squared, so this is s cube. Uh, okay, I guess I'll finish here. Uh, if you have any questions, then I'm happy to take them.